All right, so I went. It, it's early in the morning. I woke up this morning. First thing I see in Discord is uh, the the most ridiculous screenshot I think I've seen in a while. Um, but this is a thread where somebody is kind of um upset still about the Ares nerfs, which I think are completely justified. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thread. But the original post is not as important as one of the replies. All right. The reply is, is, is probably the most important thing here. And it says, quickly overwhelm enemies of all sizes. And again, this was from the product information on the Ares Inferno. Take out massive capital vessels in a single seat fighter from Crusader, which, you know, underlined is not the first thing, if you don't notice here, which is the key. The first thing is take out massive capital vessels. The second thing is the, the, ballistic, the ballistic Gatling can quickly overwhelm enemies of all sizes. So it's maybe of capital sizes. I have no idea. But the first thing is kind of setting the tone. 12 missiles and an oversight shield to keep bogeys off your back in close combat. All right? Cool. And then somebody justifies this as marketing speak, which is, is that a justification? Like, what? Are we okay with that? I don't know. And then Yogi comes in. Okay. Yogi comes in. You see, how big can I make this? And says, context is important. I made it very clear in that thread that the amount of aim assist a weapon had is dependent on the intended purpose that of that weapon. There's no contradiction. Aim assists are needed for anti-fighter weapons. Not for weapons that are meant to hit comparatively static targets, which is what the Ares was built for. <coughs> Excuse me. If we added aim assist to these large weapons, which, if people don't know, they initially had aim assist, and everybody was one-shotting light fighters with this thing, so it became the meta ship, which is what they don't want, so they nerfed it, everybody got mad, because they weren't killing everybody in one shot. If we added aim assist on these large weapons, we'd find ourselves in a situation where the Ares perform better than specialized dogfighters, which is exactly what happened. Uh, this is exactly the problem we had on release. It was not working as intended. In the end, we are aiming for a balanced con combat system as Star Citizen is not a pay-to-win game. You have to pick the right tools for the job. The, what is the definition of pay to win now by people? I have no idea. And here's the deal. This is a developer. This isn't somebody in marketing. This isn't somebody that, like, trust me, nobody is pushing these guys out and saying, you know, editing these posts and saying, this is what you have to do, right? But, like, how, I just don't understand how you can look at this and not understand that, there there there's absolutely pay to win in this in this game right cuz well okay what if i earned a capital ship and then you logged into star citizen for the first time with your anti capital ship thing the the ares inferno that you purchased and then i i get killed by it i don't know if that's a good example or not probably not but I think that there's lots of little weird things. It's Yeah, it's just like a really clumsy use of the term. And I'm not really sitting here to try to shit on Yogi for this. Uh, it's more to just like kind of keep bringing up the discussion of the fact that Star Citizen sells now literally has, has sold everything possible outside of like just a couple things. And I think somebody made a good point in our chat earlier where you can't really say Star Citizen is not pay to win if everything is not earnable in game. And, you know, that's not really on Yogi 
to do. So I think what he's talking about is more the intention of um of Star Citizen. I don't know. But here here's the like here I see an argument in chat that I don't know if it's super justified. Uh I start with a Mustang Alpha, you start with an 890 jump. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, sure, not pay to win. Well, what does the 890 jump do for you? Right? Like, maybe it's, I really want to do mining, and I start with a Mustang Alpha, you start with a, a Prospector. Then we can start talking, but at the same time, like, once I catch up to you, we're on an even playing field, right? And then it comes down to skill after that. So it's just like, it's time is what is being taken away. Right, the vulture is the best example of a, of a ship that's not available in game to purchase. Uh, what are some of the next ships that are going to be working on that are combat ships? Right, uh, a, a whole another one is, you know, currently Gladius might be a little bit of a pay to win. Right, I think any combat ship that people purchased that don't have to earn does create a bit of an imbalance between payers and players, right? And that's that there's no denying these things here is there, there is a bit of an imbalance in this system when after a wipe, there's some issues here, right? And I think we're getting to the point where star citizen intends. If we, here's the deal. I'd love for everybody to go back and type in uh, Star Citizen 2018 Citizen Con Keynote into YouTube. There'll be a video that comes up. I don't even think it's from Star Citizen. And it's just the cutout keynote of Chris Roberts. And he talks about what is release. And he goes down some of the pillar steps. And I think he's missing about 15 fucking pillars. But the, the steps they wanted to take were in one of them right now. And that's the persistence step where... They don't want to wipe anymore. So the, it seems like they're they're trying to get to this point where they never have to wipe again and prove that they don't. And then that is like a big step. Then it's server meshing, and then we can go consider the game released and live. Um, they don't have that, right? And um, I think when we're there then the pay-to-win aspects do start to shrink. So I think he's talking about the live experience when the game is complete. It's not really going to be a pay-to-win game because the players are going to catch up to the payers because the payers don't have any time, right? But I, my whole thing still is the idea of these... Dads with 67 kids that, you know, got to take them all to their soccer game and they don't have time. It's not. It's not fair to them. Right. But like. Why aren't we just making a good game? is the part that bothers me is like, why aren't we having a foundationally good game from the start? Star Citizen sells money. Star Citizen sells gold. Star Citizen sells armor now. Star Citizen sells weapons now. Star Citizen sells ships. Star Citizen sells land. Like, what don't they sell, guys? Do you, do you even have to play? <laughs> right? Like, that's the... For me, it's not even a pay-to-win issue. It's a... Where's the game issue here? <laughs> Where's the progression? Where's the, what do you want? What are you intending here? Right? Where's the conversation around that? That's my issue here. Is it, is it, you know, is Star Citizen pay to win? If we don't know what the progression systems are, if we don't know what, the some of the goals might be for players then of course there's no winning and that's why they don't tell you them so this narrative can continue but guess what there's absolutely going to be 
uh, you know, win conditions in this game. I mean, there certainly are in dogfights now, right? And right now, if you're not flying the arrow, the gladius, or some of these, uh, you know, annoying fighters that light fighters, right? You're usually losing. So, how can we argue this, right? And especially after a wipe, if you could just come in with the best ships possible and just win. Kind of stupid, right? Um, I don't know. So it's just a discussion I want to have around this. It's like when the when your devs who are, who are who are absolutely paramount to balancing the imbalance that the sales created created think that this is not a pay to win game. That makes me kind of nervous. Um, because what I don't see so far is the the difficulty that it would take for a larger ship to be flown. And I think that's a big part of Yogi's job that maybe they haven't gotten to yet because we don't have certain systems in the game. But the second, like that 890 jump example we heard earlier, no solo player should be able to fly around on an 890 jump and say, look at me, right? It just shouldn't be that easy. Can't be a pay-to-win game if it isn't a game. Good point, right? Yes, but you need skill for dogfighting. Sure, but if you put two skilled pilots in one of them in an arrow and one of them in not an arrow, one of them's going to lose. And it's not the arrow, right? So that argument doesn't make any sense. That's not the argument I'm making, at least. Like, it's the it's the need that you need the, these ships, so players buy them. They are paying to win, right? That's the point I'm trying to make. And then, if we make the examples of anything industry, you need the cargo space for the bigger cargo ships, pay to win. You need certain ships to mine. Pay to win, right? Pay to get a head start it, it is the problem. But if there are actually goals to achieve, right? If there are actual goals to achieve, then getting a head start is a, a, a part of winning. And I don't know if a player's skill can overcome the amount of head start that CIG is giving players. You, I, I, a lot of people probably aren't aware of this. Players have been allowed to purchase 120,000 credits UEC to start at launch for five to seven years every week. You have a limit. You could buy 120K a week. They've been buying them for years. The amount of money they start with must be insane, some of these people. Okay? So when you... Yeah, exactly. So when you start showing me fuel costs, uh, hangar fees, all these things for these people with these huge fleets that could do anything and have all aspects of the game available to them at the start, you know, some would argue that ship progression is part of the progression. So if you could buy all the ship progression at the start... That has to be some aspect of winning, right? It's still winning with quotations around it, but it is winning. And, and I'm trying to be reasonable about this and not just like yell at the sky and be like, hey, look at this idiot. Look at Yogi, the idiot. Because I don't think he is. But at the same time, it makes me nervous that, you know, one of the most important people to balancing the issues that we have in this game thinks that there isn't issues with certain things. And, and that's all I want to point out. Because for me, they're clearly issues. Um, and it just comes down to this. There's a whole other aspect of this. Is that some people play too much, right? And are going to, you know, people that don't have lives. Hello. My name's Salty Mike and I don't have a life, right? So there is this balance as well. So if there is winning, somebody like myself has 
an opportunity to win as well. But that's outside of the game. I just really wish, and this is just, you know, very wishful thinking. I just wish that the design of the game was the most important thing. Right? And it's not. The most important thing is the ship and how much it costs and, you know, what, what uh, post we're going to make to sell it and so on. So it's very hard to argue that Star Citizen might not be a pay-to-win game. Uh, we know what Yogi thinks the intentions of the design is, but until they start designing a game, it's it's so hard to say, right? So that's where I'm at with this. It, it's like just very difficult to see this being said by a dev whose job is to balance. Um, because it looks like they have no intentions to do any balance there. And it sucks. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It, this was more just to make a post of, hey, what do you guys think about this? You know, hey, did you see this? And what? how does it make you feel? And all that. So, doesn't make me feel good. 